embarrassing. Also the coal seam gas queen too. <laughs> Please, until that very nice Mr. Obed and Mr. McDonald wiped me off the front page. I'm very grateful to them for it. Um, thank you very much. And it's wonderful to, I thought of saying, you know, giving a list of very distinguished people at the start of this, but I'd be mentioning everyone in the audience, so I thought it's just easier to sort of cut to the chase and talk. But it's great to see you all. It's great, you know, to see such a, to be addressing friends. When I first started in the role of chief scientist and engineer, um, I, got, I was under a lot of pressure from Neville to be involved in things in the Hunter and in particular about innovation, the Innovation Festival and so on. And who can resist Neville when he, he comes along and pressures for various things? And so I'd turn up in Newcastle and I gave I don't know how many speeches on <coughs> the theory of innovation. And I can remember my slides, some of you would remember them too. There was this list of dot points, and this is out of the review of the National Innovation System. We've done a lot of thinking about what, you know, exactly what the OECD is now measuring, but at that point, as, as you'll remember well, it was, you know, we were still working out how to do a lot of the measurements, but there were a whole series of national reviews on here, the UK, various things in Europe, and so on. And with common themes were coming through. Anyway, I'd, I'd turn up at various things and give these, I think, I suspect they're rather dry speeches about, you know, a good innovation economy looks like this and has these characteristics and so on. You know, then fast forward a bit and Todd rings up and says, oh, we're launching an innovation scorecard, Brisbane did it, we've done it, you know, it shows good things. I said, of course it'll show good things, you've been doing great stuff. I thought, oh, you know, yeah, it'll be good, it'll, you know, it'll, it will be good, there'll be good stories in it. Not thinking, you know, anything more than that. Then I opened the silly thing, and I thought, this reads like a textbook, you know, of what everyone said around the world, OECD and others, say about innovation. I, I looked at the figures, and I thought, this is a great exercise, because not only because the exercise is good, but the results have come out looking like the, you know, the sort of cookie-cutter innovation region results that um, a third of businesses are innovating, that it's the ones between uh, 51 and 100 employees. That's what all the results tend to show. That's where the innovation tends to sit. That of the ones that are innovating, just over a third of them do it internally. And the rest tend to use ex external expertise, but a lot of that is sourced from the region. The in-house innovation is often incremental, as opposed to breakthrough. And again, that's thought to be a very good thing, to have high amounts of incremental innovation. It, it tends to be persistent in a firm if you have a culture of incremental innovation. That there's very significant investments by the firms who are innovating, that it's not just a flash in the pan, let's innovate next week, what will we do next week sort of thing, but doing it over, over a considerable amount of time. That 17% are doing, I think it's, it's new to the, um, that 8% are doing new to the world and 17% new to Australia. That's very impressive innovation stats and that's, you know, some of that's above the international norms. That a lot of it's about services, it's the services economy that is where a lot of the innovation is happening and that actually, it's just sort of reflecting what are the sort of best practices around the world. So bingo, you know, this is really quite a, quite a story and, and deserves to be told in great things. It's not just about innovation in in companies but it's new innovative organizations and renew and marcus and what marcus has done it's not just set up for new newcastle but it's the new australia activity it's gone global there's activities happening there the fact that that model is being exported and i did a little check on marcus just before i came over i rang uh, lily jacobs in who i've known since she was a baby over in Adelaide, who is their CEO, and um, heard a great rap about it. But it's just interesting. I said, Billy, tell me what's different about the different models. Well, they've taken the model, they've put emphasis on certain things, new models for how to use the old spaces, how to get the legal things particularly right, and so on. So it's great that people then innovate on top of the model. I was particularly delighted today to hear that one of the aspects of the innovation is very strong environmental aspects and products and services. And um, thank you to um, all of the Hunter for all the help we've had from the expert organisations in the Hunter on the coal seam gas report. There've been a lot, we've sourced a lot of the expert studies, so if you go to the Chief Science Expert <coughs> website, 
um, to look up the coal seam gas over the next few days, you'll see the expert uh, uh, reports going up, and you'll see that Hunter have a lot to say in that. So, I mean, hey, this is pretty impressive. To have enablers, and to put the, the report is focusing on enablers, that actually is textbook stuff too. That when you have uh, what um, you have a disrupted economy, as um, the Hunter has had a really big set of changes, then particularly allowing enablers to flourish is actually again a textbook finding around the world is what leads to things. This is the this is what leads to the Silicon Valleys and the Bostons and things. This is what leads to the hunter. And this is what attracts people. People come from around the world, they want to relocate into places like this. And they're fun places to live. It's where there's vibrant things happening. You can shop in the new shops that turn up. And often it's fun, particularly fun fashion that turns up in there. Um, you know, I can remember living in Silicon Valley, and a lot of it was you, you ran into people when you were buying the groceries. You saw people when you went to the movies. Um, and you often had great ideas. And, you know, coasters were always covered with ideas that turned into big patents. That's what I see happening, you know, will be happening in the Hunter. And, of course, it's a great place to live. And one of the things I think, you know, there's a few aspects of it that I think you've done particularly well. So there you are, textbook case. But I've delighted to see, for example, that the Hunter has applied on the, for an energy, you know, one of these new precincts, that there's a, an energy focus here because, as several of us have been saying, Neville in the lead, but lots of the rest of us too, you you've got this wonderful story of old and new energy in the Hunter, that you've got, you know, the coal and the traditional energies, but there's been all the work on renewable energy, there's been all the work on low emissions energies and mixes between the two, and then the control, the very fact that the Hunter won the Smart Grid Smart City project over everyone else in Australia was a, a wonderful testimony to that activity. The role of the university in the TAFE in that, the fact you attracted the Energy Enterprise Connect Centre, and of course the NEAR. We're all very proud of the of the NEAR. I mean the fact that the old BHP Billiton labs, great industrial labs that have been kept to great standards, are now within the ambit of the university but open to companies from not just the Hunter but around Australia and, and the world. They are truly world class facilities. And that was a great thing to do. On in other areas I can point to lots of other things, but up foremost in my mind in recent times is some medical matters. And as you know, John Aitken, um, one New South Wales scientist of the Oxford <coughs> Institute, he wasn't one, it, we, it's an awarded thing to a great New South Wales scientist. And John Aitken, who's the inf male infertility and infertility and environment specialist, was that was awarded that last year, 2012, New South Wales Scientist of the Year. And we have a joke at the moment, many of the other ones have just been made FRS, so we're expecting John to be made FRS at some point soon. I mean, and that's a piece of innovation too, not only the great research that John does with such practical benefit, but the very fact that when mon money got a bit tight on the working on infertility and humans, he worked on racehorses, which is another part of the hunter economy, innovative moving of techniques across between species. Hey, that's good. Recently you will have seen that the New South Wales government announced the results, the first results of the for awards under the Medical Devices Fund which has been a particular innovation of the Minister for Health, Gillian Skinner. And I was very honoured to chair the, to chair the um, committee that was determining the awards, and only a small number were given out, and they were for truly revolutionary um, pieces of, of kit or ideas. And the idea is to build up the next cochlear and the next ResMed to make medical devices. It's unashamedly about picking winners and pushing them forward. And one of those winners was, of course, Moby Drip. And Paul Dastor and his colleagues work from you know, their company, Moby Life. I have to let you into a secret. That was the only one we didn't interview. Oh, there's only a handful of winners. It was the only one we didn't interview. It was so obviously so good, it just went straight through to the keeper and got the, got the funding. And it, you know, again, it's a great example of small, high-impact innovation getting really things that make working and home life revolutionary um, through a very cheap technology. It's a wonderful thing. So if you don't know about it, look up the Medical Devices Fund on the web. So 
I think this is fantastic. You've got a great story here. I hope you'll be telling that story. I'll be telling that story for you. I have to learn to be a bit balanced, by the way. I, as I was saying to, to Gay and to Neville beforehand, I give a lot of speeches. And I'm often, when talking about the great regions of New South Wales, I always use hunter examples. And I, I have to remember to balance up occasionally. Unfortunately, you've, you're wrecking my life for me here by just pushing more examples my way. Um, so, you know, don't, don't stop, but... Um, anyway, the region is, it, and this is really a virtuous cycle. You're doing great things and it's helping more things happen. And that's really good for the whole of New South Wales and for Australia. And of course, it's, a, it's not only a virtuous cycle for itself, it's a beacon, it's a lighthouse for other regions. And there's so much others can learn by watching and being part of and working in partnership with you. So congratulations to all of you. It really is great to sit back have a look at what's been happening, to celebrate it a bit. And with that, um, I'll declare that for the Sydney part of the exercise, the scorecard is launched. <laughs>